Atompex is a new cottage company from the UK and it has received a lot of attention recently. But there are relatively few reviews and videos about it and that's why I wanted to give you a first look at my custom Atom. And this is it. A 35 litre ultralight pack that looks beautiful in all black with teal and orange detailing. The main compartment has a capacity of 30 litres and the side pockets are 2.5 litres each. The stretch front and bottom pocket aren't part of the calculation because they officially don't have any capacity. But the front pocket fits about 5 litres and the bottom pocket another 2 or so. I chose for the VX21 over the standard VX07 material because of the better abrasion resistance and overall durability. But it does come at a small weight penalty. The back panel is from Cordura 500, which is even stronger but it's also a softer material so nicer to have against your back. And since VX is a waterproof fabric, it is very sweaty so I believe Cordura is the right choice here. The front and bottom pocket are a standard 4-way stretch Lycra power net. This is I think the weakest point of the pack and will be the first to degrade, but it should be durable enough to survive a couple of thousand miles of hiking. Other than material choice, there's a lot more that you can customize on your Atom. And Tom, the owner, is happy to work with you on that. I wanted my pack to be versatile, so I've opted for a removable padded hip belt with removable pockets. The pockets are made from the same VX21 as the body and have a watertight YKK zipper. But as with the rest of the pack, since the seams aren't seam sealed, they're not completely waterproof. The pockets slide on the hip belt and are firmly held in place by two shock cords with toggles. They are nice and big so easily fit a mobile phone or even a small mirrorless camera or a lot of snacks. The hip belt itself slides in a padded slot on the back of the pack and has velcro on both sides. It's wide, just like the shoulder straps and the padding feels snug. But that isn't where the customization has ended. Because I also opted for a removable hooped carbon frame and sewn in foam padding in the back. If we turn the back inside out you can see how the frame is held in place and the sleeve that holds the 1 8 of an inch foam padding. Depending on my trip, I can use this pack either stripped down without the frame and hip belt, or if I'll be carrying more weight, I can add them again. Now, what does this weigh? The total pack comes in at 23.8 ounces. This consists of the stripped back pack, which weighs 16.6 ounces, the belt at 3.4 ounces, pockets at 10 ounces each, the frame is 2 ounces and finally the back padding at 0.6 ounces. The strip pack version is easily compared to for example Palante's Simple Pack V2 in features and weight. You've got the roll top closure that's wide at the top which makes packing easier. Large and reachable side pockets as well as shoulder pockets a big stretchy front pocket and the awesome bottom pocket that fits a whole lot of snacks and has a small hole in the corner so you can stash your waist. The attention for detail is great. For example, the fabric has been turned over a few times at the opening of the bottom pocket so it holds on tight to whatever you've got in there. With the frame and hip belt, this custom Atom is very close to the Superior Wilderness Design Long Haul 35. And how does that carry? Well, I don't dare to say too much about that just yet, but the first impressions are good. The broad and thick shoulder straps are comfortable and should be able to handle loads up to 20 pounds. I can easily reach into the bottom pocket, side pockets and shoulder pockets, which allows me to pack in such a way that I can handle a lot of common situations without having to take my pack off. The frame and hip belt seem to be efficient and immediately take the load of my shoulders and transfer it to my hips which makes me think it should be good to about 30 pounds. The pockets, though big, don't limit my movement and I'm not brushing against them while walking. In conclusion, the Atom seems to be a well-made, good-looking pack that offers so much customization that you can truly order the one that suits your style. And in this configuration, it will be my go-to pack for the upcoming trips. I'll come back to you in a couple of months for a proper review. And as always, thanks for watching and if you like this video, subscribe for more.
do an initial gear review of this pack here, which I'll be taking on my through hike of the Pacific Crest Trail. It is a custom made pack by Waymark Gear Company. It's 50 liters uh, frameless and it weighs about 36 ounces. So let's get started. So I have the pack fully loaded, uh, even with items that I'm not going to be taking on the trail, just so you can see how much you can actually fit into this pack. So to start, um, I asked for there to be straps on the bottom of the pack in case I ever wanted to carry something underneath the pack like one of these pads, which I'm not going to be bringing, but still you can see I can strap anything to it. See? Can easily take it off. And there we have that. Also has two large side pockets which I love They're they have like a slanted design so that they're super easy to access even when I have the pack on I can reach behind grab like my water bottle or whatever out uh, once again to kind of show you what this thing can carry here I put my jet boil I will not be taking this on the PCT but once again just trying to show you what it all can hold um, I like to put things in the side pockets or the front pockets uh, that I want easily accessible. So that fit the whole jet boil with obviously my fuel and everything, and there was still some extra space in there. Ooh, forgot. Have a little first aid kit, you know, handy in the side um, pocket. So these are really big. Let me move this. So these are really big, stretchy, and super heavy duty and durable. So that. Um, I can keep pulling things in and out and I'm not going to be worried about it carrying. The side of this pack also has multiple straps in case you want to strap something to the side. If I have my trekking poles and I don't feel like using them, I usually stick them in my side here. This is another strap that you can put the poles through and then up here even. Uncinch that and then this will secure the trekking poles or anything else that you want to carry. So there's a lot of options for these pockets. Over right here I'll show you. That carries a smart water bottle that I will be carrying because on the PCT because it fits with my water filter, my Sawyer water filter. I'm sure you've seen it, the squeeze bottles. So there's that. And then if you're feeling extra hungry, it even fits a very large hoagie. See that? Right here, all in this uh, pocket. See how much it stretches? Very heavy duty. And there's like an elastic band, so it, uh, I'm not worried about anything falling out. Once again, you have these side straps to accommodate um, anything that you wanna hold down. Next up, we have this front mesh pocket. As you can see, it's very stretchy, um, super durable. Um, in this, I'm probably going to carry a lot of things you see here. If I have like a book or a journal, um, I have my water filter. i take this out. So this is like a, my water filter, my Sawyer squeeze filter that will go with my smart water bottle. But this is in the front. I have uh, my down jacket in case um, you know I get cold. I'll probably put my rain jacket in here. If it just starts raining, I don't want to have to, you know, pull everything out from my pack. Just throw that all on the ground. Um, some camp shoes. So that once I'm done hiking or my feet are just killing me and I need a break, I have my camp shoes easily accessible. And then I can always strap my trail shoes to the outside of my pack or shove them in the front pocket. Like I said, a book or a journal, you know, you know, anything that you just want to put in the front pocket, it's up to you. Um, all right, so as you can see on um, the top, I have two adjustable straps that cinch down the pack.
This is also a roll type, roll top type pack. And right now I have it cinched or clipped on the sides like this just to make it um, as tight as uh, as tight as possible. But what's cool about roll tops is that if you want, you can actually roll it and give it to itself. Let's see what's in here. All right, so when you open it up, as you can see, um, there's Velcro in the top, so easily, um, easy to close and you can roll it, clip it, whatever. All right, let's see what kind of goodies I have in here. So I just have some clothing, uh, an extra layer on top, an extra layer on bottom, you know, some socks or whatever. Here I have my sleeping pad. This is my tent. And just to show you again, here is my uh, bear canister, which is required for some portions of the Pacific Crest Trail. And you know, I packed it with some food, so um, all my food will have to fit in here. I think it's a, what is it, a 450? Yeah, BV450 uh, model, in case anyone's trying to figure out um, if this will fit into their pack. I tried to fit it this way, and I don't know, it just was taking too much effort. So to do that day in, day out, a couple times, I don't know, I'm not interested in. So I put it in this way. And here shoved down at the bottom is my sleeping bag. Then I had added um, a hydration sleeve. I, for my bladder, I really wanted this because I am not good at drinking water when I'm out on the trail. So I like to have an option for me to just keep hiking and then be able to drink as I go. So I had Mark, the owner, put in a hydration sleeve for me. Carries, it will hold a three liter bladder. Uh, here it is, it's just a little pouch. And let me try to roll this down so you can see. It just clips onto the inside of the pack. If I decide I don't want, any, want it anymore, I can remove it. Um, some other options that you can add or not include in your pack is a hip belt. Now, I am usually not a fan of hip belts. Sometimes I don't even use it, but it is removable, again. And it comes with a lumbar pad. So it's heavy duty Velcro, but this does come completely off. So if you decide you don't want the hip belt anymore, you don't want that extra weight, you can completely remove it. Um, and that is an option that I liked. And I just wanted to keep just in case. I also added this hip belt pocket. Once again, I can remove it. Um, you don't need it, but I just really liked the idea of having this big pocket so I can put in my Sony A6300 camera fits completely comfortably in this pocket it's very big and I want to keep you know snacks and just other various things um, chapstick uh, phone sunglasses anything so I definitely wanted this just in case and here we have the straps I got them very bright orange so you'll be able to see me out on the trails for sure uh, very they're very cushiony I love the fabric. A lot of different, you know, cords and straps so that you can clip things to it, adjust it however you need. I also added this little shoulder pocket. Right now I have my phone and chapstick in there. You can see it's pretty big. I have a, this is an iPhone 6 uh, with extra room. So right on my chest right here, I can access anything. Once again, you can put sunglasses, anything. Um, so I just wanted all these options and talked about it earlier this is a frameless pack I was a bit worried at first about carrying a frameless pack especially 
on a big hike like this. I've never used a frameless pack for a through hike before, for any kind of backpacking. But I actually have really fallen in love with it because right now all of my backpacking packs have frames on them. And although it feels good on my back and I feel supported, I can't move my head I don't have a very good uh, range of motion and I don't like that. The thought of wearing that every single day for 20 plus miles, five months, for five months or whatever, just seemed daunting to me. So this pack is so comfortable. I have such uh, mobility in it, such a range of mobility. English is hard sometimes, um, that I really, really enjoy it. There's just about everything I had packed in there and I still had some extra room. As of right now, I don't have anything that I would like to change on it. I'm really excited about the frameless aspect. I'm really excited about the roll top. It is smaller than my normal backpacking packs and it's a couple of pounds lighter. So all of that gets a big thumbs up from me. Anyway, in the description below will be all the details for the Waymark Gear Company. So please go check them out. I think it's an awesome business. Mark, the owner, will do whatever he can to make sure that you get a fully custom pack. If you're into that, he's super helpful and he knows what he's talking about. And please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, especially because the PCT is coming up soon and I will be vlogging. Thank you so much for everybody's support and yeah, see you later. Bye guys. So how are we doing guys? Your old pal Bob Ganusha once again. How is everybody doing? So I'm up here in New Jersey right now. I'm up here visiting my family for a few days, moving some things out of my apartment up to here. And so I figured I'd get out and go for a nice quick day hike. So I'm actually up on the Appalachian Trail right now, up in the northern New Jersey section. It is a nice crisp 22 degrees out this morning. So, I know what you're thinking. Bob, what in the world are you doing only wearing a long sleeve t-shirt? You're gonna catch a cold. Well, you know, if you watch my videos, you know me. I like to keep things nice and light, nice and simple. I run really warm as it is, and I'd rather not sweat with it being so cold out here. I know I'm just out for a day hike, but even stopping and standing still for a few minutes, if I start to sweat, I can just feel the cold really kick in. So I'm just keeping it nice and light, keeping myself a little bit warmer. This is the Under Armour cold gear, so it does still keep me fairly warm, but most importantly, it's breathable, keeps me dry. I still have leggings on underneath my hiking pants, gloves on, hat on, all that stuff, all that good stuff, I'm good to go. But enough chit chat. Besides looking at this view behind me, I'm out here for another reason, and that is to talk about my brand new day pack. That's right, I got a brand new day pack. It's something that is really awesome, super comfortable. So, and I figured what better way to review it than bring it out on an actual day hike, get the feel for it, and talk about what I think about the backpack thus far. So let me get some miles in. Let me continue on the way, get warmed up a little bit here. Ooh, it's gonna be a beautiful day. I got some beautiful views for you guys. Stay tuned, we got some good stuff to talk about. Talk to you guys further on down the trail. Bob Ganoush out, boom.
All right, how we doing, everybody? So it's been a beautiful day hiking thus far. Uh, coming towards the end where I have to turn back around and head on back. So I figured I would stop, talk to you about the brand new day pack that I just recently purchased. So I present to you guys the Mystery Ranch Scree 35 liter. Let's go ahead and do a quick turnaround. So I am so excited to finally own a piece of Mystery Ranch gear. They are a really popular backpacking company. They make lots of really cool gear as well. Um, and REI just started carrying them, so of course I had to pick it up. Now, of course, I know what you're probably saying, Bob, what are you doing spending this money? You're trying to get ready for it through hike. Well, you know what? My current day pack, the REI Traverse, not that there was really anything wrong with it. It was a fairly comfortable backpack, but I always had problems with the hip belt rubbing my hips raw. No matter how many times I've used it, no matter how many layers I put on, it would always rub my hips raw. I needed to get something a little bit different um, so I wasn't killing myself, you know, heading on into my through hike. So I wanted to pick this bad boy up. Let me start off by saying it is an immensely comfortable backpack. I tried it on with like 15 pounds of weight and it felt like nothing. So a couple things I'm going to cover with this backpack here today. Uh, number one, I'll cover some of the specs of the backpack, some of the dimensions, so on and so forth. Secondly, from there, we'll talk about some of the main features of the backpack itself. And then I'll talk about the main features that I really like about the backpack, why I wanted to get it, and especially moving forward, why I wanted to get a backpack like this. So it is pretty chilly out here. Let me take this guy off. Let me put my puffy on, and then we'll go ahead and get on into the backpack itself. So, okay, guys, just some quick specs about the backpack itself. Again, this is the Mystery Ranch Scree backpack. So to start off with, this is a 35 liter backpack. I know it's a little bit on the larger side of day packs, but I wanted to go with the larger side day pack for a particular reason. One, I can carry some extra weight, some other little odds and ends, and as well, moving forward with this backpack, I wanted to get a little bit more versatility out of it. Uh, this is the medium large version. You do have some torso adjustment. This is gonna be about 21 to 22 inches long on the frame. Uh, just the initial frame itself, not when you extend the torso as long. Uh, so you can get away with this as a carry-on size luggage if you really need to. Uh, you're looking at about nine to 10 inches deep. Uh, really nothing too bad there. And you're looking at about 13 to 14 inches wide there. So pretty nice dimensions. Again, 35 liter. You can use this as a carry-on piece of luggage if you really had to. The overall weight of the backpack, uh, if I remember correctly, is right around two and a half pounds. Don't quote me on that. I will leave that answer in the description down below. Um, so right around two, two and a half pounds. So not too bad. It is a very supportive backpack. And as well, what I like about it, it is waterproof. But we'll go ahead and talk about that in a little bit. And last but not least, this does retail for $179.95 down at your local REI. Uh, so a little bit more on the expensive side, but as I get into some of the details and some of the features about the backpack, you'll understand why it's a little bit more expensive than some other options. Okay, so let's go into some of the features that you're going to get with the backpack. Let me start on this side first and foremost. So down, the, down on the bottom, uh, you do have two hip belt pockets down here. I know a backpacker's favorite, just having access to those snacks, some ready available items, kind of thing like that. Really, really nice. Uh, what I really love about this backpack is they have really heavy cushioned shoulder straps. Um, it's almost as if they took the shoulder straps off their bigger backpacks and put it on this one itself. So it makes it really, really supportive. Standard sternum straps that you have down here, but what I really like that they did was that they have this kind of elastic piece here, this kind of elastic clipping system. So if you do have a water bladder, you can lash down the hose, or if you need to keep a knife, um, whatever the case may be, it has a little elastic. I've been utilizing it to hold my GoPro right there. Really cool feature right off the bat for me, especially. And of course, it comes with some of your standard adjustment, load lifters up top, fully adjustable, um, really, really nice. Coming on to the side here, you do have your mesh water bottle pockets sitting there. Pretty nice size. I think I can fit two of these smaller size water bottles in there. You can easily fit a full liter Nalgene without a problem. Now, they are pretty, uh, they are pretty vertical. So what I found out is the best way to get your bottle in and out 
Um, number one, getting them out is push up from the bottom and it quickly pops out there for you. To get it in, I notice that if I grab the whole water bottle and then push it in, it's a little bit easier to get my water bottle in and out that way while it's still on my body. You do have these on both sides of the backpack. Coming on up to the top here, you do have number one, a quick easy access pocket there. I'm just keeping some snacks in there right now. And then right in front of it, you do have a deeper access quick grab pocket. I'm keeping just my car keys, my wallet to some other odds and ends, so on and so forth right now. And of course, along the top, you do have some different loops, some different looping systems uh, to where if you need to lash down equipment. Now flipping it on over to the front here, this is really where it makes its money. So to start off with, blatantly out in the obvious, is this kind of Y-shaped zipper. This is a fully taped zipper, so a waterproof zipper. What's really cool is opening this thing up, the way it kind of splays out, really nice wide lid right off the top, and as you can see, it kind of has this extra collar. So as it's zipped over, with those two zippers coming together, you know that there's not gonna be uh, any water kind of leaking in through that small little gap. So really nice on their part there. Before I zip down the front, across the front you do have all these different daisy chains and different loops and everything that you have there. Another great way for lashing down equipment, whether it be axes, um, climbing equipment, so on and so forth. Really, really nice and convenient. They already provide you with that. You do, of course, have not only dual purpose uh, lashing clips as well as compression clips across the front. This helps keep everything together. You can strap down extra equipment if you have to. And then, of course, the big thing here, again, a tape zipper, fully waterproof. This is opens on up. As you can see, I have just some puffy jackets, uh, just a fleece hoodie. I have my rain jacket sitting in there right now. But it's cool how everything opens up in one shot. Inside is a fully coated inside. So going along with the tape zipper, you do have that waterproof coating to make sure everything inside stays nice and dry. Now inside there, I know it's behind a bunch of stuff right now, but you do have a small hydration sleeve. It's not overly large to be honest with you. Uh, you can probably fit like maybe a one and a half liter, um, one liter, one and a half liter bladder if you had to, but it's intended to fit more of like a small actual tactical water bladder, not one of those camel bags just for casual purpose. So really nice features, really nice and versatile as well, multi-purpose. I love how it's waterproof all by itself, making this a really durable backpack and a long-lasting backpack up on top of that. So that price tag starts to look a little bit better, doesn't it? So okay guys, why did I get this backpack? I know I'm getting ready for my through hike. Why would I spend the money on a brand new day pack? Well, for starters, like I said before, my other one was rubbing my hip raw. I needed something a little bit more comfortable uh, so that I wasn't tearing my hips apart and creating problems for my through hike. That's number one. Number two as well, I wanted something that when I get off the trail was, help, was going to help me go into my next phase of my YouTube channel. Now, I know I do a lot of the backpacking, a lot of the camping, and a lot of that other awesome stuff as well and I love doing it but I would like to get into more of the climbing aspect of things so especially a waterproof backpack tons of the lashing points something that's really supportive really ideal for that climber you know being able to carry your ropes your quick links some of your different harnesses everything lashed out on the outside something super convenient and as well an extension to the backpacking I wanted to get into some of the more bushcraft side of things as well so again, fully waterproof backpack, number one, that's awesome with what I want to do. With all the different lashing points, being able to carry an axe, uh, being able to carry heavier knives, wool blankets on the outside, and some basic equipment on the inside, really good for that. And of course, being having a super, super supportive suspension system and being able to carry some of those heavier bushcraft items, something really ideal for me. So I know it's a little bit oversized for a day pack at 35 liters, but it's something that I plan on utilizing a lot moving forward and in a lot of different ways, and this gives me the versatility necessary to do that. So for anyone looking for a new day pack, something to take them traveling, something to look for a waterproof option, uh, great for climbing, great for mountaineering, uh, great for bushcraft as well, definitely take a look at the Mystery Ranch Scree. A really really good backpack this is the first day I've had it out and so far I am so impressed with this 
I can easily take this for a night or two if I really had to. Um, but I have a through hike to get ready for per first and foremost. We'll talk about that down the road. So thank you guys so much for following along on another great video here. Woo! Starting to cool down a little bit. I guess it's time that we uh, snapped up, got up on the way. So, thank you guys so much for following along on another great video, another gear review. I hope this helped you out with something. If you're looking at a new day pack yourself, don't forget to subscribe down below to keep up to date with all my videos. Check the links in the description to follow me on the trek on all my blogs, on my Instagram as well. Hit that like button, hit that share button, leave me a comment or a question down below. I always do appreciate it. I'll catch you guys on the next video, the next gear review, next adventure. Pleasure as always. Baba Ganoush out.